I used to never be able to tan. You know, my mom used to tell me that I got her pasty skin jeans. Um, you know, it's just iris jeans or this jean coat. Like this was me last summer, at the end of last summer, after getting plenty of sun, you know, going on beach trips and stuff. This was me. And you can tell I was getting out in the sun here because my hair is basically just as blonde as here. Super pale. Um, you can see I had a lot of acne as well. But anyway, yeah, you can see a little bit of sunburn here as well. Like I was going out in the sun. What would happen would be because I was pale, I would just burn as soon as I went out in the sun. And then that burn would never turn into tan. I wouldn't be able to get any tan. So then it would just be this endless cycle of being pale and then burning again. This is just because I wasn't properly adapted to the sun. And I also wasn't giving my body what it needed to become adapted to it. And I didn't have a proper routine to adapt myself to the sun. Because, you know, being an Anglo-Celtic pale skinned human, I'm not going to be adapted automatically genetically to the 14 UV in Australia, right? But now, this is what I look like now, or a couple of days ago, actually. I tan really easily. I don't burn nearly as much, right? I do, have, I do burn a tiny bit on my nose, really only in very strong UV um, when it's for hours. And only because, you know, it's constantly, my nose is constantly in the sun, so it never really gets time to heal. You can see the crazy tan line right there. And it's only the start of summer as well. So imagine how much more tan I'll be, um, you know, by the end of February, by the start of March, right? especially my nose. Um, but if I burn, it just heals really quickly and then turns into tan, like heals in one to two days. And it's never really bad burn. Like I don't peel on my shoulders or anything. And this is the tan I've achieved in just the last four months because before spring, I was just as pale as this. And now I can go into like UV 12, UV 13, even 14 for multiple hours without even burning, without wearing sun cream. And a really big reason for this is because of my diet. Now, obviously what you put into your body is gonna determine how your body reacts with the environment, especially something so significant, so strong as UV rays as the sun. So if you're consuming a lot of plant oils, a lot of polyunsaturated fats, this will be what your cell membranes are made up of because your cell membranes are made up of fat. These polyunsaturated fats will determine how your skin cells react with the sun. Now, polyunsaturated fats are super unstable. They oxidize really quickly, especially when they're in the oil form. They're super reactive because the molecules are double bonded. And this leads to lipid peroxidation or the creation of lipid peroxides, which are carcinogenic and contribute to cancer. So if we go down here, let's check out this study. You can see here, this is a study done on lipid peroxidation in the skin and photocarcinogenesis. 16 groups of 45 animals were each used in the study and they were given a semi-purified diet containing 4, 2 or 0.5% corn oil or 4% soybean oil. We can see here a almost linear relationship between the lipid level, the amount of polyunsaturated fats because all these oils are majority polyunsaturated fats. So an approximate linear relationship between lipid level or polyunsaturated fat content and tumor latency were observed with 4% levels of unsaturated lipid producing maximum enhancement of photocarcinogenesis. So you can see the lipid content, your fat profile in your skin is what determines a lot of how you react with the sun, a large margin of it. Now, saturated fats on the other hand are much more stable and they strengthen cell membranes because polyunsaturated fats, when your cell membranes are made up of a lot of poofers, your electrons are gonna leak and this is gonna cause even more reactions with the sun, even more lipid peroxidation, even more carcinogenesis, even more burning. So saturated fat, super good for your skin, super good for keeping you protected from UV damage and super hydrating from your skin as well. You really want to be prioritizing eating a lot of saturated fat. You can even put this on your skin if you like to as a topical product, assuming that it's raw fat. Otherwise it will be damaged and it will contain its own lipid peroxides. The next thing is super important. You must do gradual exposure, right? If I was to come from England with super pale skin adapted to like three UV every day in summer and then come to Australia in summer and I would go into UV 14 weather, I'm definitely going to burn no matter how healthy I am, right? Because I'm not adapted to the environment. How healthy you are is largely dependent on how adapted you are to your environment because it's all subjective with environments. And this is why we see people who live around the equator eating way more saturated fat compared to people living in high altitudes like Alaska, eating a lot more polyunsaturated fat from like wild caught fish and so on, fish fat, um, whale blubber and whatever. At the equator, they eat a lot of coconuts, which are super high in saturated fat. 
they need a lot of megafauna meat, such as in Africa, um, like with elephants, with cows, and so on. And gradual exposure was really important in me developing my tan. So you gotta start off with UV three to five. This would be like early spring, right? As soon as the sun comes out in early spring, as soon as it hits, you know, August or whatever, whatever it's is spring, I don't, I don't care. Um, as soon as it hits spring, you have to be out in the sun as much as possible. Hopefully you won't be burning in UV three to five. Hopefully you won't, you know, hopefully you're not that pale, right? But UV three to five, start off with that. Um, early spring, or if you're already in summer, this will be early morning light. So you wanna be getting a lot of early morning light. It'll be way weaker, way less likely to burn or late afternoon sun as well. These two are really important to include as well, even if you're getting, you know, that midday UV. Why? Because they contain a lot of infrared and near infrared light, which is gonna boost collagen, heal your mitochondria, boost elastin, really help your skin develop properly and repair itself properly. And it's also gonna really help support your metabolism as well, which is gonna be crucial for when we're producing melanin in the skin to get that tan. Then you want to move on to UV six to eight. This is going to be mid spring to early summer, depending where you are. By now, if you're already pale, this is when burning will usually start. So if you're locked in back at UV three to five on this routine, then you shouldn't be burning when UV six to eight hits. You want to be out at midday, getting like 30 minutes to an hour of sun everywhere. And this is where you'll start to develop some real tan. It's also really crucial that you still include early morning or late afternoon sun to again support the repair and development and healing of the skin and the metabolism as well. And then this will be like mostly only near the equator, you know, subtropical climates, UV 9 to 11. This will be like summer in Florida or summer in LA. Most people, if they go out in this, in this climate and they don't wear sun cream, they will burn in like 10 minutes, right? So this is quite extreme UV. But if you follow the protocol, you should be tan enough to not burn in this weather. And then we move on to UV 12. This is extremely, this is extremely extreme UV. It's only found in like Australia, Africa, South America. This is where you'll really be turning brown and people will really start to notice your tan. And if you're fully white like me, you're likely to still get a little bit burnt if you don't moderate how much UV you're getting. But yeah, guys, so do gradual exposure. While you're sunbathing, it's very important that you consume raw fats or you have consumed raw fats recently, a lot of raw fat to support your skin cells, to support your, support your cell membranes and also support your metabolism. You also want to stay super hydrated so your skin doesn't dry out. So the best hydration for when you're in the sun is hands down raw milk because it's going to give you that raw fat and also raw hydration. Raw fat is also very hydrating because your cells produce its own water with raw fat a lot more compared to carbs or just some mineral spring water, always good as well, but you wanna make sure you're also having a lot of raw fat, especially saturated fat. And just don't be a knob, right? We don't want you to like be super pale and then go out in the sun for eight hours and get completely red because that's not gonna do anyone any good. You don't wanna burn past the point of healing when you start peeling. If you get a little bit burnt, that's fine. As long as you're giving your body the right inputs and you know, you're able to heal without peeling because that's when it turns into tan. You really don't want to stress already burnt skin. We don't want to be going out in the sun when you're fully red and just getting even more burnt and just adding more stress onto that because the sun is stressful. You have to adapt to it. Also do not use toxic sunscreens. This is super important. This is just going to ramp up the skin cancer. It's already carcinogenic. And especially when it reacts to the sun, it becomes extremely carcinogenic. A lot of them even have seed oils in them, which are carcinogenic on their own, but especially, you know, when they interact with the sun. What you do want to do is sunbed just until you start getting barely pink or before that. And then you want to stop no more sun for the day until you return to like normal skin complexion, healthy skin complexion, right? If you have to expose your already burnt skin to sun, use a natural zinc oxide or natural sun cream, you know, with coconut oil, with beef tallow, make your own, you know, coconut oil, zinc oxide, beeswax cream, put it on the burnt parts because, you know, you don't want to be stressing your skin over and over. There's no point just adding more sunlight, adding more damage 
um, while your skin is already red. And if you do happen to get burnt, to make sure that it heals super quickly, we have to apply some raw fats. These are really good. Things like cold pressed coconut oil, that's really good, super high in saturated fat. Also raw butter is super nourishing, again, super high in saturated fat. Also has some bioavailable, you know, amino acids, vitamins, uh, minerals for healing your skin, for supporting your mitochondria as well. So guys, that's the blueprint for tanning, right? This is how you're gonna get tan in 2026. Shoot me a DM on Instagram if you need some personalized support, a personalized routine, or you can join my school community below. There's lots of guides in there to help you, a very active community. I'll see you in the next video, guys.